So the questions come up, what is consciousness? And this is such an important and fundamental question that let's explore it now and hopefully break away from that false sense or personal or local or human sense of what consciousness of what consciousness is and therefore how to somehow get into the right consciousness into truthful awareness and then we're free in consciousness free as consciousness all right first of all start with the premise the truth only god is there isn't anything else but god everything everywhere infinitely eternally is god nothing exists but god and god is spirit and truth perhaps the clearest word we can use is or words we can use are spirit god is spirit god is incorporeal god is the infinite so what god is not is matter is corporeality is finiteness locality god is spirit god is the incorporeal the infinite and besides that there is none else and now we understand god as being life god is life god is the life jesus said i am the life i am the life we can say the i is the life and there is none else the i and besides that there is none else the life and besides that one life there is none else and that life let's turn it back to our understanding of what god is the life therefore is the only the life is the infinite the incorporeal the spirit the eternal now let's turn that back to life and understand life therefore is infinite life is incorporeal life is spirit life is eternity and that life never changes god does not change the only cannot change and need not change if god is the only why would god need to change into some other substance some other form other than itself or finite amongst its infinity it's impossible the infinite is incapable of becoming finite if it were possible that the infinite become finite then it wouldn't be infinity in the first place only finiteness can be finite but god is the only god is the infinitude god is the eternality itself the incorporeal the spirit the life therefore life is spirit life is eternity life is incorporeal and besides that life there is none else Now, we must, in order to understand even what's been said so far, completely disregard what we think we are, our sense, our sense of being, of body, of world, of thing, of friend, of love, of amount, of condition, of place, of activity. Forget it all or disregard it. And fill your thinking, fill your awareness with what's just been said and you would be well to go over what's just been said and i'm speaking to everyone a hundred times a thousand times 10,000 times that's what it takes that's what i've done that's what joel did that's what every 
illumined consciousness has done, or being has done, even to get to that grain of illumined sense which starts witnessing illumined experience, the experience of life and harmony and love and abundance and joy, freedom. We've all, and you all, and this is the way of it, soak yourselves in truth. Listen and listen and listen. Really permeate your entire being with truth. And the only way to do it is to disregard the human sense and devote the entirety of you to truth. Don't try and reference truth to the human experience or condition. It will not work. So disregard, at least for this moment of pondering, this hour, and the repeated hours or moments, periods that you devote to your truth awareness, which want to be more and more and more every day and night. But disregard the human sense completely and in an empty consciousness, a totally receptive, welcoming consciousness or mind or awareness, Listen to and soak yourselves in truth. And that which you soak yourselves in is that which we've heard right here. And when you've done that, when you begin to feel the truth of what's being said, then comes the next stage, which is right here now. Listen to Jesus. I am the life. I am. I, I. And Moses, I am that I am. Again, we hear I. Jesus again, fear not, it is I. There it is again, I. That word I, that reference, I. So the logical question is, what is I? Because surely... If we can understand what I is, we can understand our freedom and how to get there. We can understand our wholeness, our life, our truth, our abundance. The truth that is the truth of God, the only truth, the only presence. So what is I? Well, I is consciousness, life, your and my and everyone's and everything's aliveness. It's life itself, the life itself, consciousness, consciousness, aliveness, awareness, beingness, any of these words. I am consciousness. I am the consciousness I am conscious with. Consciousness is my conscious awareness I am conscious with consciousness so whatever you're observing right now you are observing with consciousness you're conscious of it this is the way the human mind describes it I am conscious of and then it starts describing what it's conscious of I am conscious of my room I am conscious of books in my room, shelves and furniture, couches, chairs, tables. I am conscious of the window and the view the window allows me. I am conscious of the trees. I am conscious of everything I can see, hear, taste, touch, smell. I'm even conscious of that which I'm thinking. Thinking is my consciousness in activity. Seeing. Hearing, tasting, touching, smelling is my consciousness in activity. Without consciousness, I'd have nothing to be conscious with. And so I wouldn't be conscious. And if I'm not conscious, I don't exist because I am consciousness. Therefore, because I is life, consciousness is life, existence is consciousness. Existence is life. This is what all the great masters are referring to 
and indeed what you refer to and know now. I is consciousness. Fear not, it is I. Fear not, it is consciousness. It is pure consciousness. The purity of consciousness. Unblemished, unconditioned by a false sense of consciousness. So right here we can understand that God is consciousness. And because God is all, everything, everywhere, despite the way it appears to be, is God. And God is, to the human sense, invisible. And yet God is everywhere as everything. Therefore, actually what we are observing is completely invisible. It simply is sensed as visible. Visibility is our low sense or foggy sense or darker sense or lower level of conscious awareness. And it makes that which is invisible to the five senses visible as five sense objectivity. Body, form, activity, organs and functions, trees, flowers, birds, colours, fragrance, dollars, human beings, love, neighbours, homes, everything of our world is simply a sense, a lower sense of that which is actually completely invisible to that sense. But nevertheless, it is everything everywhere of our experience, simply sensed at a lower level of awareness, and that lower level of awareness is what we call matter, is what we call physicality, and so on. But that matter, that physicality, isn't the reality of that which we're sensing, that which we're observing. Everything, everywhere that we are observing, actually, here and now, this second, is God. Is infinity, harmony, peace, truth, pure consciousness. And so maybe we say it like this. Consciousness is the substance that is everything everywhere, which is God. God is consciousness. The substance that is God, the life, the alive stuff, the presence that is God, is consciousness, awareness. And so your body is pure consciousness, it's pure spirit. All these are synonyms for the same thing, God. Pure spirit. When we observe or experience our body through the five senses, we are having a lower sense of that which is actually the divine body of spirit, of consciousness. Pure spirit, pure consciousness. Without any matter, any physicality. Right here and now your body is that. It's the only body. God hasn't changed into a physical body with physical organs and functions. God is God and besides God there is none else. Therefore, here and now, your body is the body of spirit, the body of consciousness, pure spirit, pure consciousness, without shape, without form, without organ or function as we know it, without locality. Your body is free in and as spirit this very second. Your body is eternal. It never is born, it never dies, it never ages, it never becomes ill or diseased or injured. It is the body of spirit individually being lived, individually being its presence, its purpose, its life, its uniqueness. And that is you.
so the thing always to keep in mind, fill your mind with, is that God, being infinite, being the only, being omnipresent, being everything everywhere, is consciousness. God is not objectified. God is not a him or a her or an it or a thing or an activity that we can name. God is everything, infinitely everywhere, despite the way the mind sees that one thing. And it sees that one thing, that one consciousness, that one God presence as infinite varieties of hims and hers and its and activities and amounts and places and conditions. But forget about that and realize that everything, everywhere, infinitely and eternally is the one presence that is God, that is consciousness. So my very consciousness is God consciousness because consciousness, God, is indivisible, inseparable unformed, unshaped, non-local, universal, infinite. It's like an infinite ocean of oneness. And you are that. I am that. I am the infinite ocean of consciousness. Observing myself. I'm observing aspects of the one infinite ocean of consciousness that I am. That God is as I. The more I believe the lower levels of awareness of that oneness that I am, the oneness that the infinite ocean of consciousness is as I, then the more I am limited by them. As I observe what is called myself, my body, my world, and everything going on in that world, and believe it in and of its own self. So I look at a tree and I believe that that is a tree. I look at my home and I believe that that home and everything in it is the way it looks, and is something of its own self. I look at my body and I believe that I have a physical body, and in that physical body there are many organs and functions, and it's my job and my luck to keep them healthy. And I may not be able to succeed, because there are many powers in this world that work against the body, including time. Time works against the body. It ages it and eventually kills it off. You see, so at these lower levels of awareness that we call the five sense awareness or the conditioned mind, the mind with conditions in it, then I have to live by that experience because and only because I am believing that level of awareness as being something real of its own self. Now, there is only God. Therefore, everything of the lower senses of God isn't actually what's happening, isn't actually what's here, isn't actually what's being experienced. The only thing, the only body, the only organ and function, the only world and everything everywhere of it that I'm experiencing is actually pure God, pure consciousness, without form, without locality. So the tree I'm observing through the window, even though it looks like a tree at this lower level of consciousness or awareness, isn't actually what it appears to be. It is actually the fullness of God the fullness of harmony and peace and joy and freedom and life. And yet, through
through these five senses, it truly looks like a tree, and it truly looks like garden furniture, and it truly looks like a window I'm observing all of this through, and it truly looks like a home that the window sits in, and it truly looks like my mind and my body that's observing all of it. But no, the only presence, the only life, the only being, the only body is consciousness. Therefore, I am and I live and I move and I have my being in and as the infinite ocean of consciousness. Therefore, I am consciousness, I am infinite. I am eternal. Right here and now I am, not in some other lifetime. There isn't any other lifetime. This is it. I am the life. Well, if I'm the life, there isn't any other. And because life is infinite and eternal and omnipresent and spirit and truth, I am that. There isn't any other. And indeed that is true. Now, how do we rise? We simply fill our minds, our thinking, our contemplating with this, with exactly what we've just been doing. Until the sense of reality, which is this five sense world, becomes the unreal and reality, truth, spirit becomes our reality, our real, our one real. And this is the work, this is Jesus referencing the fact that the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. Yeah. It's very, very few of us who are willing and devoted sufficiently to spend hours upon hours upon hours of each day thinking truth, filling our minds with truth, just in this very way we've done on this audio. Constantly, day and night, filling our minds with this truth. Consciousness is I, and besides I, besides consciousness, besides God, there is nothing else. Therefore, by definition, logically, everything I'm witnessing at this five sense level of my awareness isn't that which truly is, because consciousness is invisible to the five senses, and yet becomes perfectly visible as the good of the five senses as we fill those five senses with the awareness that only God is, only consciousness is, only the infinite is. So I'm no longer going to be fooled by anything that appears to me finite, anything that appears to me of good or bad. I now know that it of its own self is unreal. It's a lie of the senses or a suggestion or a hypnotized or mesmeric sense of that which is actually, this very second and always, God. And God is life alone. God is good alone. God is plenty alone. God is love alone. Therefore, everything, everywhere, despite the way it appears to be or appears to act, or the amount that appears to be here, the amount of life or the amount of supply or the amount of love, doesn't make any difference how it appears. What actually is, is the fullness of omnipresence, everywhere present. And as I rise in my conscious awareness of that one truth, then it is that I'm filling my senses with that truth automatically. And then those senses reveal the good that is actually there now, conceptually witnessed, locally witnessed, finitely witnessed. But you see, even while we're witnessing all this conceptual and finite appearance, we are knowing the truth still. The truth is that despite this appearance, good or bad, the only presence is God, therefore the only presence is omnipresence, infinity, eternity, spirit, truth, God itself. And that is how the senses are filled with truth. We don't have to do anything to fill the senses other than continually realize that all is God and never be fooled or 
start to train ourselves not to be fooled by that which appears. And so we disregard that which appears, whether it be good or bad. We disregard it and we realise truth is the only presence. And it's that very activity of consciousness, that very way that is the rising in consciousness that reveals the plenty and the life eternal and the love eternal of God. The freedom of God here and now, as this very experience you are and you're having and I am. This very second, this day, it is that straight and narrow work of realising always, always, always that despite appearance only God is, therefore only consciousness is, everything is consciousness, therefore all I have to do is continually rise in that living awareness and then I'll witness more and more of consciousness, of good, of omnipresence, being the very presence of me, wherever I am, whatever I do, whatever I touch, whoever walks into my consciousness, there, evermore, as I continually rise into pure God consciousness, is the very presence of God in what appears to be a human being, an animal being, a plant or vegetable being, even a supposedly inanimate being, there is the love and the light and the truth and the freedom and the giving, the bliss, the heaven of everything, everywhere. <laughs>